Hello and welcome. Today is the 27th of June, 2017. Welcome. Let's do a very quick, long video on some predictions within markets, uh, mainly Bitcoin and the precious metal and the dollar, how I think it's going. Of course, my bets are always in line to such. And that's why I want to make this very quick yet very long because how can I go through this in a short period of time? I really can't. And we're looking at a Bitcoin daily chart. Down day, down day, down day. Other alternate coins having it. And I'm hearing people panicking like, hey, this is over, over, over. I think it was Chris Duane, Silver Shield, saying, you know what? It's a Ponzi scheme. It's got to end now. It's over. You, you got you to get out. No way. And and you know what? Maybe it is one of those like pyramid type of situations. And you know what? There was a time in the tulip mania. I'll talk about calling tops a little early. I think that's what he's doing. That's my guess. That's my first prediction. He's calling a top on this way too early. Whether he's right about it being one of those like a similar tulip mania kind of deal and it all faltering at the end. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe. But... I know I look at this, it's a correctionary move on this Bitcoin chart. And I know breaking down below here, maybe it goes down here. And even, even still, maybe testing here or even, oh, could you imagine coming back down to 1200? Heaven forbid that happens. Well, maybe it does. Because to me, I feel purely that it is insane, insane, insanity to think that these crypto markets are going to move in a normal, decent structure. They're not going to have these insane moves because they've been doing it such. So realize it's hog wild. It's going madness and the madness isn't stopping at this time. Why would it? So that's what, what, how I look at it. Of course, we're going to have decent up and down moves. But it doesn't surprise me, of course, to see these uh, markets go to like 5,000, 10,000, 15,000 in well less than a year's time. And all of that because of currency devaluation, realization of the peeps, the peoples. Oh, S-H-I-T, my currency's doing this. Oh, India, oh yeah, we're gonna ban these rubles. Hyperinflation going mad. I look at a bag of chips at the gas station going for $4.99. I remember buying it for about $2.29, not that long ago. So of course, big reasons there, inflationary measures. I kind of want to predict craziness as far as reaction with these moves and the people about, oh my God, everything's crashing because this is the same chart linear fashion. And for years, I've been wondering why traders don't get why you don't use logarithmic when point A to point B and when point A is low, point B is high. When that number is several numbers, you start to get a decent difference. This is 3,000 divided by a little under 1,000. So that's about a little over 3x. At that, you can barely notice the difference. But when it gets more extreme, like an Ethereum, this is Ethereum's daily chart. And it's is linear, linear, linear. Like most people use this. I don't know why. I don't know why, but they do, but they do. Okay, this is what it tells me. It tells me that it's falling down pretty harshly. And that, oh my goodness, if we go anywhere down to like here, like 100, 125, 90, I mean, that's the end of the world. Notice nothing happened at the start in February. A little bit, not really anything happened here. And it got going up here. Let's put the, uh, the logarithmic chart up now for the same market. Oh, it looks a lot different. Yeah, it looks, you don't say, yeah. So that number that I talk about in here, oh, that would be a decent, decent correction. Sort of like what it looks like right now. So markets go down here. I know what the, I know what I'm going to hear everywhere. Oh my God, it's over. Ethereum's done. The market is over. And when you hear that, buy, 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 basically that's space. That's what it means. I mean, put your buy order now in for a hundred. I, I, I don't know if that'll hit, but that's what I know I would hear. And I know that the markets would go up. This is, of course, midterm, intermediate term 
uh, trading. And as far as what I think Ethereum's going to do, I wouldn't be surprised if it does fine along uh, the Bitcoin case and, and many other alternates, of course, to do very, very well at that point. But a lot of other alternate coins to do poor and maybe even go to nothing. That's always uh, situations within uh, those ones. But uh, hey, this uh, I think the whole people panicking and uh, not understanding that this is a roller coaster. This is what you should expect to get into it. If you are going to get into a boxing fight and you're not prepared to get your punch faced into, I mean, come on. Say, I'm a mixed martial artist, UFC fighter. They know what to expect coming in. And those trading this, you should know what to expect coming in. It makes it a lot easier for me using these charts. But moving on to these predictions. I, I purely expect Bitcoin to keep going up. Uh, five digits into next year, totally. That's the easiest way of putting it. And who knows how much higher after that. As the dollar, I'm not going to put a dollar chart up. I do think it's going to basically go through its dying processes. I've been predicting for quite some time now. For basically close to 10 years, 9 years. I have been waiting and thinking, you know what? It is going to be over and more and more people again waking up to what's going on as far as central banking it's it's got no choice it's almost like scientific it has to happen within the laws of nature the laws of physics as far as human involvement is concerned and that, that's how i perceive it to be so yeah for this to be uh, continuing to go up now i've heard on uh, chris duane the silver shields talking about uh you know what? You got to get out now. You got to get out. It's a Ponzi scheme. It's a Ponzi scheme. Uh, I mean, why would you want to be in right th at this time? It, or it's it's over. And I don't know if the long term on Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies, the crypto market is going to be fatal. But I think if it is going to be fatal, it's going to go way up before it goes way down. Like in the tulip mania, if it goes from one unit to 10,000. If you were saying when it was at uh, 500, it was up too much. That's the idea in which I'm thinking. And so I'm on the exact opposite fence as he is. We'll see how this plays out. I think this can go up really, really well. And here's an example of just looking at a chart like this and saying, you know what, it's up too much. This is what the NASDAQ looked like in 1992. Look how, look how high this is. You've gone from like 50 to 600. That's not sustainable. No, no, no. And you just can't look at a chart and think it's up too much. Right here, perfect example. It looked up too much. Well, this was 603 in 1992. Let's expand this eight years. And this is at the time when it was up too much. Because saying here it was up too much meant you missed out on more gains or you could have actually entered in here and got the gains and right now well this thing went topped here it came back down or so down to here and now it's up here and the old saying is you know what these markets are set up so those who get in here are the ones that make a killing here and those that can uh, be able to do such at least in the cryptocurrencies over a year or so there's yeah there's going to be uh, periods in which this is happening because as mike maloney states the greatest transfer of wealth is happening right now and it's big cycle i think is within cryptos but i'm just going over the case just because a market looks like looks like it's up too much doesn't mean that it is and uh let's move on gold right now at 1250 but we're talking about long term I think gold is the safest of everything in my book. It's if we look at the dollar, gold, silver, platinum, palladium, Bitcoin, Ethereum, any cryptocurrency, holding real estate. Think of any investment idea. I got to think gold is the safest, but no matter which one you choose, there's going to be risks. And you can see why holding any one asset class can burn you. So where's your safest option? And of course, what's like whatever. I think your safest option is diversification. But as far as gold is concerned, a secular bull market, I do expect to uh, come into force. And I think it's going to happen soon. I, I think it can start ASAP, but in the long-term time, time sense, ASAP could even be 
like fall of this year as well. And when when the big movements as far as a dollar dying situations, dollar devaluation, people losing faith in larger numbers and uh, through periods of times, that's what's going to be sparking it. And that time, of course, for the dollar, I expect to see soon. India, yeah, let's get rid of these rupees. They can devalue the currency anytime they want. They uh, do throw it within the inflation. They tell you if inflation is, say, 2% or 1.8% a year, that's basically what they're saying they're stealing from you, in, in a sense. And then the, 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 it's a dying system that I think is in its point. So I think gold and silver are going to do well. But as Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies, I think, will outperform it first as I state having 10 15,000 movements to me it doesn't really matter what gold and silver do to, to state that well obviously Bitcoin will outperform it because even if gold goes to 1900 in these early stages of that bull market and I would be surprised if it could do that well by the end of the year then it would still be smarter to buy or hold Bitcoin now and then buy gold and silver later even when these prices go higher now with silver, this brings me to an interesting uh, situation because I want to talk gold to silver ratio here, but I'm first going to talk about the silver Bitcoin ratio as it's uh, well over 100 to 1. And it's probably going to go 2, 3, 4, 5-ish, 100, like a decent amount higher. So like I stated, I think it's a better opportunity to get silver later. I think if you got a whole bunch of cryptos and no gold and silver, you're making a huge mistake. And if you have a whole bunch of gold and silver and you have no cryptocurrencies, again, I think you're making a big mistake. But that's, I'm not, you know, I'm not going to say that. I think I would be making a big mistake if I was in a situation where I didn't have the diversification. Yeah, I don't give suggestions. I just talk about how I see it and how I would do it. Yes, what I do. All right, then. So as I see this, I, I've talked, I used to have a poster on back in my room back in the day stating silver $1,000 an ounce, and I'm still, if not even more so, on that case today. As I realize that the actual physical metal and its need is extreme, and its movements before 1970s going from two, up two bucks, actually like a buck and a quarter even, up to 50 in just a few years. So extreme gains, I think it can beat 40X big time. I think it can reach into four digits. And I'm, I'm, but the reason on that, I wanna talk about the gold to silver ratio. Historically, you research, you'll find out it's around 16 to one, give or take a little bit. And the research I've done over many years, or at least over the last several years, is I think the fair number should be less than three. Or less than nine. Actually, less than three. I'll get to that in a bit. But less than nine. Because when I look at how much in the reserve situation, what is mined each year, this to me seems like it's the key number. But with supplies and silver really in a huge shortage situation and discoveries coming all the time, I think this could be significantly less than nine, closer to, well, I'm not going to say one as in I think that, but if for years the web bot has talked about a brief move to that point. So if a situation were to come, and let's assume that the dollars are still in existence when this happens, when they reach one to one, well, Obviously, gold's going to have to be going up, and gold's right now at 1,200, and it's probably going to go up to at least 5,000. So, well, where would silver reach? And that's insane when I think about that. But quite frankly, the only ways it could ever reach one to one, and maybe it's a pipe dream and it will never happen, you know what? That wouldn't surprise me as well. But maybe we see silver go up to 1700 and gold go up to 5000 and crash? No, no, no. I don't think anything like that would happen. But for myself, when these numbers do start to get low, I'm thinking, you know what? Six, between these numbers here, you start to liquidate silver into gold. And when you do get less than nine, you go more aggressively. And if it gets anywhere near par, you, you pretty much sell out. 
and then of course get into gold. Maybe later on you might get into stocks or, or real estates after that train is over, but that's something I'll look for later on down the line. It does seem for me short term that a, a play where cryptos should outperform the precious metals, so that's where you'd want to be now. And then when the precious metals ratio and Bitcoin gets to an extreme level, liquidate into silver. Then when the silver and gold ratio gets out of hand and it's into single digits, you, unli you liquidate silver into gold. And that's as far as I really have thought, as far as any type of vague, how things are moving predictions moving forward. So thank you for tuning in again. These are my predictions and how I think it's going to go. And six months from now, four months from now, things will change. And that means my ideas will also change because how smart would it be for me to stick with? Yeah, because I think this on June 27th, 2017, I'm going to think this way later on. Meaning I thought one way on April the 7th on 2008. So I got to think the same way. Oh, hell no. Or heck no. Whatever. Take care.